I was peeking too early Your lack of buddies is a little concerning You heard the rumors, now I'm hearing confirming I made a friend in my thirties Welcome to Jam Mechanics, uh, ladies, gents, friends, betwixt and beyond the gender binary, Jam Cells all. <laughs> is, <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm coming is, is Jam Cells, is, is that like, is that in I'm, cells, but uh, <laughs> Jam Mechanics? I'm, I'm, I'm workshopping it, okay? <laughs> okay, we're not going to uh, go with that Welcome one. to the Jam Cabin. We are here. Uh, my name is Matt Johnson. I'm from the Narcissist Cookbook. And with me also in the Jam Cabin is... Primary Jam Cell Bug from Bug Hunter. Uh, jam Cell Sigma. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, listen, we can This was, I already regret going down this road. If you've never listened to Jam Mechanics before, weird episode to start on, but you know what? Every episode is a jumping on point. Let me explain how this works. Me and Bug, we are professional songwriters. We have known each other for years. We have toured, we have written together. Um, but you know what's difficult? It's writing songs. Mm -hmm. Writing songs is hard, and coming up with ideas for songs is hard. So we get together uh, every week, every couple of weeks, and we are set prompts by a guest, and then we have to go away for three hours. We have to come up with a song, write that song, and record that song, and then come back and present it to each other. Sometimes it's really good, sometimes it's really bad, but yeah. the fail state is coming up with nothing. As long as we come up with something that we can use in the future, that is a win for the jam mechanics. So exactly, yeah. I get before we hop into uh, our our guest prompter. Uh, do you want to do you want to get to know each other? How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling like I know you pretty well at this point. You know, we've done 17 icebreakers. No, mm -hmm. we've done 16 icebreakers. But you know what? You can never truly know what one is more? going on you do one inside. More? Yeah, 17 might be the magic number, as yeah. they say. <laughs> um, cool. I got one for you. This is from Ferris. If you were to make a career 180 and do something completely different, what would it be? Puppetry. A what? Puppetry. <laughs> I'm not joking. Okay? Like, I love puppetry so much. Are we talking ventriloquism or marionettes? Anything. Like, literally Whoa. anything. Yeah. Like, really, like, I will watch... I, I will watch... Any form of puppetry is just magic to me. I, yeah. I saw this one recently. Um, it's, a, it's a couple of women, a couple of French women, I think. And they do puppetry, which is just... Um, which is just a, a face puppet and mm -hmm. one hand, and they mm -hmm. are on stage, and you can see their bodies, and you can see their faces for the, the entire thing. Mm -hmm. But it's just taking this completely inanimate object. Oh, mm -hmm. and by the way, the masks, the puppet, does not have any movement in it whatsoever. Their mm -hmm. eyes don't move, their, their mouths don't move, but just the way they move this head and the mm -hmm. way they move the hand brings it to life in a way which is just alchemy to me i yeah. don't understand yeah. anyway yeah so puppetry i'm scared to get into it because i don't think I, I i sort of like magic i feel like i don't want to ruin it by knowing how the trick is done yeah. you know I, I don't want to be behind the puppet i want to be in the audience just weeping <laughs> <laughs> anyway i've got a question for you do you ever worry that a song yes. is oh do you ever do you ever worry that a song is too serious or conversely too silly I will normally worry more about too silly than too serious. I think the only thing I worry about too serious is the density of too serious songs on an album. I think uh, Take It Back was originally going to be on the Rough Draft. I had recorded it with all the Rough mm -hmm. Draft songs, and it was going to sit where Baby Teeth was on that album. And I was like, you know what? With, uh, with Deserve Me sitting a couple songs away, uh, and these both being kind of big emotional songs, Take It Back might be too big for this album. And so I'm going to hold it and I'm going to put baby teeth in there and be fine. Uh, and I'll, maybe I'll, I'll come back to it on the next album. I ended up making the next album literally like centered around, take it back. Um, the entire album is a mirror around, take it back where the first four songs are all like pre take it back. And the second set of four songs are all post take it back as far as like Ooh. viewpoints on uh, different topics. I don't want an album that is like a total, just a series of bummers. Um, and right now yeah. I probably have like five pretty serious songs and I'm like, all right, I have to like, slow drip these out because I can't have my next album be half sad songs. Uh, it's too much. So I got to like pick and choose which ones I actually want to um, put forward. Yeah. I think the, the needle swings a little bit 
uh, more in the sad direction for me. Mm-hmm. Like uh, a really good example of me thinking a song is too silly is the fucking Alpaca song, mm. um, which mm-hmm. people people on the on the first tour we did together, people were like, "I really wanted to hear Not Entirely Alone. I really wanted to hear Gendering Teddy." On this tour, people are like, <laughs> "Can you do the Alpaca song next time?" And I'm like, "Absolutely not." Uh-huh. Um, but it's all people want to hear. I was people. There's no substance to the Alpaca song. I'm coming around to it. I'm coming around because you actually we did this in the bus because I was ranting about it, and then I was like, "You know what? I'm going to go back and listen to it." And then at one point, you caught me laughing at it, and you were like, <laughs> I, did. Ah, I did. We were we were arguing in the tour van, and I was trying to convince you that it's okay to be a silly goose sometimes and just have a song that is a silly song and yeah you were sitting back there with your headphones on and all of a sudden you chuckled and i turned around i was like i got you you know the song's <laughs> funny you're making yourself laugh yeah so a- anybody who's listening to this know that i am uh, working from the inside uh to yeah. to advocate yeah. for uh alpaca song um yeah okay i think i think we know each other so are we ready to 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 kick kick things off yeah exactly now in the last week, I've been putting um, alarms up around the perimeter of the Jamma cabin, um, mm-hmm. just so I know when someone is approaching. And my phone has been lighting up in the last couple of minutes. Someone is approaching the Jamma cabin from the Forbidden Woods. <laughs> <laughs> and who is that? From Grand Commander, we have Sam Damisk. Uh, Sam, say hello. Hey, how you guys doing? Doing really doing well. Doing good. Yeah, thanks for, for coming on and, and being our our jam consultant today to give us a little entropy to, to just springboard off of an idea. Um, before we get into our prompts, for people who don't know, Sam is a, a very talented a songwriter musician from a, a project called Grand Commander. Uh, and so we have this list of... Uh, icebreakers that that guests have submitted. Some of them are silly, some of them are random, but because you are a songwriter, I can ask you this. This might have been meant for us, but I'm going to ask it to you. Uh, What's what's the story behind the song you wrote that means the most to you out of all your songs? The one that means the most is probably May Loving Hand Show You the Way. It's kind of a serious topic, but it's a serious question, you know. So no, it's just about... uh, you know, the experience of my dad passing away mm-hmm. and uh, just kind of going through that. Not really talking about the process of death or like, you know, any of that. Just more as much, uh, it was kind of a question that I'd never really struggled with of, you know, I'm not particularly religious, mm-hmm. so I don't really have like a, a belief system where people go, what happens. So I just found myself asking that question, like, where is my dad, mm-hmm. basically, is the question. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, the song was just a way of kind of dealing with that and the unknown um, and the mystery. I have an album called Him that is is all about like grief about my dad dying and oh wow uh, yeah and it's uh, it's heavy to the point where I keep getting messages from people being like uh, went into that album not knowing what it was about mm-hmm. uh, so maybe I should put like a content warning or something on it but yeah it's sort of the same idea like I'm not religious and just like what is like the weird ways that grief manifests you know yeah I think um, I think it's yeah. interesting I think all three of us. Uh, are in a, a very unique position where all of our discographies, you can go from a pretty silly song uh, and then all of a sudden get blindsided by uh, some, some yeah. feeling. No, 100%. Because yeah. you, don't, you don't know what any of us are coming out with next. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for yeah, me, yeah. sometimes it'll be like a soft little acoustic ballad. Sometimes yeah. it'll be something heavy as hell. But yeah, yeah. content wise. Um, and yeah, the one thing I'll say about May Loving Hand Show You the Way, just the, the kind of the crux of the whole thing was. Uh, or the conclusion I came to for myself is like, I don't know like where he is, Mm -hmm. if there is a where, you know, but for me to kind of deal with it, I just wanted to put the thought out there, like wherever you are, I hope that you're being guided. No, I love that. I love that. It's very, it's uh, unsure, but optimistic, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, Exactly. Yeah. I feel like you summed up my whole life point of view, (laughs) unsure, but optimistic. (laughs) Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. The Uh, next guest we have on, we should just be like, so little uh, icebreaker, can you sum up your entire life point of view? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Awesome. Another question we ask everybody on the show is what's your jam? What's like a song or artist that you've been listening to recently that you want to give a little shout out to? I've been obsessed with the song called A Little Blood by um, Grace Berger. She's out of New York, kind of a I don't know, indie rock, psychedelic thing. Yeah. Just yeah. a really cool song, great lyrics, great melody. I'm just playing it on repeat. We'll add that to our Friends of Jam Mechanics playlist on cool. Spotify so that people can check that out. Sam, 
uh, you're here to give us two prompts. The reason we do two is so that Matt and I can uh, kind of debate, come to a conclusion of like, okay, we're going to springboard off of one. Uh, it's not Matt chooses one, I choose one. We just kind of have to debate uh, and firm around just doing one thing. Uh, and so uh, with that, Sam, uh, can you give us your, your first prompt for us for today? Okay. The first one actually came from uh, the Grand Commander Discord because I said, okay. hey, I'm going on this podcast. And I, I changed it a little bit, but okay. fighting the urge to inflict pain on someone who has wronged you. Okay. Ooh. We're, getting a, we're getting a deep episode today. <laughs> we're getting a real deep episode. Fighting the urge to inflict pain on someone who has wronged you. Okay, yeah. so not necessarily forgiveness. The original prompt that came from um, the user was water bottle in the Discord. Mm -hmm. Because you can hear where it came from and how I interpret it. The okay. original prompt was the feeling of taking the higher road, like okay. being the bigger person, to someone who has wronged you. Okay. Like maybe the emotional battleground of fighting the urge to inflict pain, stooping to their level onto okay. that person. But through my filter, like the part of that that kind of makes my creative wheels go, fighting yeah. the urge to inflict pain. Cool. All right. Okay. So that's like the serious one. Okay. Uh, we are ready. We're ready for prompt two then. Okay. Prompt number two. I will listen to a couple episodes and the dot, dot, dot seems to come at the end. Mm -hmm. So I want to put a dot, dot, dot at the beginning. Okay. So it's dot, 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 and then I died. <laughs> and, then I, and then I died. Um, yeah. All right. So fighting the urge to inflict pain on someone who has wronged you or dot, 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 and then I died. So I have an immediate idea I, well, you know, I was going to say I've done a whole bunch of death stuff on this mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've got a specific idea for number two, but I feel like number one is spicier. It is That's spicier. That's where I'm at at the moment. There's a lot of places that you can go with the first one, because fighting the urge is not conclusive, I think. Uh, and then I died is a little more conclusive. I feel like... Yeah, you know you, how the story yeah. ends every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it's either you have to start with it or you have to end with it. Um, and if you end with it, the punchline is kind of already there. Whereas fighting the urge to inflict pain on someone who has wronged you, it could exist in different worlds where... Uh, you don't succeed at that at fighting the urge, um, or you or you do. Um, so it, it leaves it a little more open ended. What do you feel, Matt? I'm saying I'm saying number one. Say number one. Okay, I can be convinced. Fighting the urge to inflict pain on someone who has wronged you. I love it. Cool. Waterball is going to love it too. This is great. Awesome. Cool. I love that you pulled that from the Discord. Oh yeah. No, we we have some jam mechanic fans in the Discord. Yeah. Cool. So they know that you're you're it's specifically you're doing jam mechanics. Oh no, hundred percent. Yeah. Cool. Cool. That's yeah, awesome. the first the first person he, he was like, uh, yeah, I've listened to every episode. Here's what to expect. Okay. I got a whole primer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amazing. That's very cool. Um, well, yeah. Shout out to all your fans in your Discord that already know jam mechanics. Uh, yeah. Speaking of, tell us a little bit about Grand Commander for people who haven't heard of you before in our audience. Like, what's your style? What do you do? What have you released? Do you have releases coming up? Are you touring soon? Like, let us know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my background, I'm like a recovering bass guitar, progressive rock musician. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, so for so the Grand Commander style, I would just say, you know, it's kind of indie rock. Sometimes it gets heavy. Sometimes mm -hmm. it gets a little folky. So I, ha I have a new song that just came out, a single launched, um, I think, two days ago. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, called Coming Back. This one's of the heavier variety. It's got some guitar shredding in it. I have an album called Bear Factory that came out a couple months ago. So I'm pushing that. Yeah, so that's the news. Yeah, Sam, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, everybody go listen to Grand Commander. And uh, we're about to go fight the urge to inflict <laughs> pain on someone who has wronged us. Friend in my 30s. And we are back from the break. Welcome back to Jam Mechanics. Did you have a good time doing a Jam Mechanics, Matt? Uh, yeah, I did. This one actually went reasonably smoothly. Like Same. The, the recording process was... I was I was struggling to get a clean sound out of it, and so I think this recording sounds more rough than I wanted it to be. That's fine. But um, yeah, show me what you got. Okay, so the prompt, as a reminder, was fighting the urge to inflict harm on someone who has wronged you. I took a, a bit of a different tact with this. Um, what I wanted to kind of... I, I don't know how much I want to say before I, I show it off, but I guess the path that I took with this was someone finding blame with somebody that they really 
shouldn't. Okay. Like fairly should not. Basically, I wanted to describe a dynamic where you could understand that somebody was um, upset with somebody, but also understand that it's not fair to be upset with them. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of where I, I came with this one. It is called Not Your Fault, Kid. Oh. Yeah. I just read the Don't. first line of that, and yeah. I'm like, bug. <laughs> just, yeah. So okay. whenever you want. Okay. In five, four, three, two, one. Go. It's not your fault, kid. I still love you. You're my baby brother it's not your fault kid i still love you you're my baby brother i had a family mom dad dog in a backyard my own room and a guitar was stuck on f and i couldn't get past it now I think it's stuck in the attic or dad's place Or maybe the storage box that he got when he got kicked out And that just happened to be, just happened to be When you came around It's not your fault, kid, I still love you You're my baby brother It's not your fault, kid, I still love you You're my baby brother but mom I love you, so I hope that yours does You've got her eyes with a shortcut And our dad's <laughs> smile that I've barely seen yet At least it's absent every other weekend When I'm dropped off and lobbed in the corner spot On a cot set up in your room How this happened to me, this happened to me Because because of you, it's not your fault, kid. I still love you. You're my baby brother. It's not your fault, kid. I still love you. You're my. But you're not a text on his phone left unguarded. You're not a hotel charged to the family card. You're not even them caught in the act. No, you were nine months past. Now you can't be ignored or talked out. You just happen to be, just happen to be the proof that knocked us down. If I seem shut down and muted, that's just what I've found is easiest. But I've changed so much, can't tell what's me and what's now. Ship of Theseus, if I seem shut down and muted, that's just what I've found is easiest. But I've changed so much, can't tell what's me and what's now. Ship of Theseus, not your fault, kid. I still love you. You're my baby brother. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> From the bottom of my heart. That's great. That's fantastic. Thanks, what man. a great song. I Thanks. thought it was just going to be like, everything was fine. And then my parents had another kid. Mm -hmm. And now I'm not the only kid. Yeah. And you went you went somewhere dark and bitter and cynical. And yeah. like that was uh, still felt like a Bug Hunter song. But hey, that thanks. felt like it had more of an edge to it than I think yeah. I've heard anything you've written it's a dark song for sure it's probably yeah i mean i'm trying to think of another song that's maybe um as dark as that i've written for jam mechanics um but uh it you know it was a, it was kind of a dark prompt it felt like a very interesting dynamic to explore in a song i don't know if i've ever heard a song that's about this particular thing but i thought it'd be an interesting path to go down no i think that's fantastic i would love to listen to it again and figure out if my immediate feeling that you shouldn't open with that chorus mm, is the yeah, right idea. Yeah, struggle because, with that one. Because the chorus, for me, doesn't hit until the context is yeah. there. Yeah. And when the context is there, it hits hard. Yeah. So I don't I don't know if opening with the chorus is the right idea. You got that... You got that um, uh, glockenspiel in there yeah. like you can uh you could just do that melody do the melody of the chorus on the glockenspiel and sort of foreshadow it and have that yeah. as the opening yeah i think i think what i'm going to do and this this was my thought that i just couldn't in the time that we had come up with the line the uh, the chorus is it's not your fault kid i still love you you're my baby brother um i would love to open with that chorus but uh leave out the you're my baby brother I have something like it's not your fault kid i still love you 
uh, and then maybe some other line that doesn't quite give away the, yeah. the the party yet. Starting with the the kind of more emotional first verse as like the intro to the song feels a little much just to start with because the co- the chorus chorus and verses are meant to be very get mad calm down get mad calm down and start yeah. starting mad feels like the wrong choice so i agree with you the chorus starting as it is is not correct but i would love to make a modified version of it that hits later on with the you're my baby brother to give that kind of context later on because you're right it is a little too early for it if you're going to do that then even just taking out the line you're my baby brother would work because that one of my favorite things that songwriters do is when you have what you think is the chorus and yeah. then the chorus is like completed with mm-hmm. a, with an extra line later on yeah um i don't even think you need you're my baby brother you could just have yeah. it's not your f- kid i still love you yeah yeah, it's yeah. Not your fault, kid. Yeah, but yeah, this is fantastic. This is great. If my medication allowed me to have feelings, I would have had feelings <laughs> all of this. Um, it's a, it's a bit short. The, the one direction I kind of wanted to go with it uh, at some point was um, because I, I imagine this song being kind of like an internal monologue of a lullaby that this the narrator is want like is singing for his like little baby brother right because there's this verse about how uh dropped off and lobbed in the corner spot on a cot set up in your room so like i imagine this song is taking place while this uh this older child is like comforting this small baby like early in the morning and being so mad that he exists but also you know taking care of him um and alternating back and forth between just wanting to scream at him uh for you know what he represents but um also understanding this is not your blame to bear um and i'm still going to take care of you so i would have loved to maybe do a little bit more about like how i need to take this role or the narrator needs to take this role in order to be a better example for the baby than um you know perhaps his his dad is and how he's kind of torn up his family with his decisions um but i didn't i don't know i felt like i got to a bridge and i liked the bridge and then i kind of had another smaller bridge and then i was like i feel like the song is pretty much run out of steam at this point so i don't want to make it any longer also i really loved the the rhyme of uh, when i'm dropped off and lobbed in the corner spot on a cot set up in your room yeah get fucked bug yeah (laughs) that's what i'm looking for every week um i used the 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 idea um that we had kind of been uh, spitballing around on tour we came up with that joke about um (laughs) <laughs> someone being uh, a centaur that's half human half ship of theseus uh which is a, it's a very funny joke it's a super super funny joke and I, I know i used it in a not jokey way uh but i found a spot for that line because it, i was enamored with it it also felt like it kind of resonated very well of this this person being kind of torn between these two feelings that he has and feeling like he's he's been kind of fundamentally changed by Um, this experience that he's gone through. Yeah, fantastic. I think, uh, wait, what was the title for this one again? It's called Not Your Fault, Kid. I originally called it Not Your Fault, but then I could only read it like, this is not your fault. fault. (laughs) (laughs) So I added the kid so I wouldn't have the urge to uh, call it that. Yeah, I think people are going to be kicking off about that. Cool, yeah. I don't know, uh, it's not universally very relatable, but... It doesn't matter. Like, when you're a good storyteller, you can make anything feel relatable. You know, my favorite movie is Mission Impossible 3. (laughs) I can't relate to being in a a secret extra-governmental organization and then leaving that to get married, but then going back in for one more <laughs> job because the person that I mentored was killed and some and you know I can't relate to that but JJ Abrams that's makes me true. relate to it that's true that's why he's the master of his craft <laughs> uh, by the way natural enemy of the jam mechanic is the lawnmower um i had a yeah i don't know what's going on that's like ooh, two weeks in a row had a rough different time days. rough time with lawnmowers this week um yeah last week we did it on a wednesday lawnmowers the whole time this week did it on a thursday lawnmowers the whole time uh then it started raining and that scared them away so uh, i was able to complete the recording i had like an hour and 15 minutes to record this and i recorded it in about 15 because i was just waiting for the the lawnmowers to go away let's do your song now so my song is called the family dog i had a chorus that i was like oh this is great i can build a whole song around it and then Mm -hmm. i realized that i basically just rewritten push by matchbox 20 and so i I deleted the whole thing i don't know that song you don't know you know push by matchbox matchbox Let's see how far we push. (laughs) 
no. That one? Um, I wanna push you away. Oh, yeah. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Yeah. Yeah, okay. basically, I, know, I, I was like, one. this yeah. bangs. And then I'm like, oh, it's pushed by Matt Walsh. <laughs> so um, I deleted all that, cool. came up with something. Uh, again, this is very short and sweet. This I feel like this needs something a little bit more. Okay. But uh, let's, let's, let's hit play on it and see Ooh, where, you, see where it, we go. All right. Uh, we got a song called The Family Dog. Dot mp3 i love that it's good good addition to the title uh i am going to hit play in three two one go okay are you done i've been over here biting my tongue let me just catch my breath Really swill this blood around Let it get into every gap in between my teeth Every cavity from the years of sweetness You force fed me and I swallowed it all With a thank you and a smile Not so pretty anymore, am I? What's the matter, baby? You look like you got your face chewed off By the family dog I'm only playing and it's cute that you think this really is the worst I could do You never know what you can chew until you've bitten it off So make your next move carefully Don't set off my instincts All the things I could say Like the fuse on the bomb in your brain Give a wink Take a bow, let you take the win and walk away when the fuse burns down in a year from now. It'll blow and your skull would be hollowed out. I know you better than anyone ever has. I know how to take you down, but I won't. So you can relax. What do you say? Th thank you. There we go. Good boy. Not so pretty anymore, am I? What's the matter, baby? You look like you got your face chewed off by the family dog. I'm only playing, but it's good that you think this really is the worst I could do. You never know what you can chew until you're bitten it off. So make your next move carefully Don't set off my instincts <laughs> I, uh, I didn't know it ended that suddenly, but yeah. that's how it ends. Now. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I love that. Uh, you got you got uh, this like simmering. Uh, it's like um, it's one of those songs that sounds a beat, and then you look at the lyrics and you're like, Yeah, this ain't a beat. So. So one of my like as someone who was bullied in high school, one mm -hmm. of my core power fantasies is being able to say something so mean to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that it collapses the pillars of their mind and uh, like just plant a little something in their brain. And yeah, and then a year later, it just it just blooms into a little poison flower mm -hmm. and destroys their mind. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of what this is about. This is about, you know, I'm putting myself not into that situation, but, you know, into like bad breakups or stuff, something yeah. like that, where someone has, has just be started being extremely hurtful. And I'm like, what I really want to do right now is just say something, say something that fucking destroys your, destroys your sanity, yeah. but I'm not going to do it. No, I loved, I loved the intro. It was very, um, I've been over here biting my tongue. Let me just catch my breath. Really swill this blood around. Let it go into every gap in between my teeth, every cavity from the years of sweetness. It's like, you know, you know what you're doing with the metaphor. You know your way around a metaphor very, very uh, well. Thank you. I was, I was really pleased with that opening, with yeah. that opening verse. Yeah. Um, it, it's great when you can not only hit a metaphor, but kind of like live in it for a little bit and it all makes sense. And then kind of going into this, like, you look like you got your face chewed off by the family dog. It gets the point across very, very quickly. That was the first line that yeah. made me go, oh, okay, that's a song. Yeah, this yeah. is a song. I can, I can build something around that. Yeah. Which um, was spoiled yeah. for me, by the way. You spoiled me on Tumblr because you know, Matt, I've told you this. 
You're the only person I follow on Tumblr. So when I'm halfway through writing my song and I get a little notification saying, oh, yeah. the Narcissus Cookbook has posted something. And I was like, what's Matt doing? And Matt should be working on Jam Mechanics. And it's you talking to our fans on Jam Mechanics uh, Tumblr and telling them, here's a little preview of the song I wrote today. And I'm like, hey. Listen, the first rule of Tumblr is you turn off notifications on Tumblr. No, I love my I love my Tumblr notifications because it's always like, the Narcissus Cookbook really liked this post. And then I get to go, <laughs> I get to go see it. I'm like, whoa. The Narcissus cookbook is trying to piss people off about <laughs> this thing um well, let me ask you yeah. what did you f- how did you feel about that tiny tiny little spoken word bit in there i really like that it was a very good way of getting across i'm in control right you taking a moment to step outside uh lyrics and step outside a melody to uh what was, what was it good boy what was it was a little, little at the end it's just like sarcastic what, good what boy? do you say what do you say yeah Th- thank you Good boy. Yeah, um, that was a a very impactful way of kind of um, getting that that point across um, that I think wouldn't have been as effective as a as a lyric with the rest of the melody. So good job. Yeah, good good yeah. spoken word bridge. How do you feel about it's just like overall completion? Is there anything else you want to do with it, or do you feel like it's uh, no? Is this is? is the kind of thing that I would I would probably come back to. Maybe I'd come back to it in a few weeks and go, yeah, this feels finished. I was even playing with the idea that it could be part of remember i was saying that last week's song oh yeah could be part of like a jesus of suburbia yeah. like sort of thing and just like just have like that song into this song Let's and just it. have it just be like this lump a nine minute lump of fucking um of toxicity yeah uh, yeah jam mechanics writes a jesus of suburbia let's go <laughs> <laughs> yeah i am i do think that this song is from the perspective of somebody who is like who has a lot of anger and isn't going to do anything about it yeah. who has been wronged by someone they really trusted and maybe has a lot of like internalized uh, uh internalized anger about uh, about betrayal uh, just real <laughs> yeah. so yeah, yeah do i need to pay you for my therapy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got a we got a deep dark episode today this is the deepest darkest episode of jam thank Kennedy you grand had. commander yeah no kidding let's see what the people think if you want me to know and or bug to know what you think about our tracks. Easiest way to do it, get in the Discord. Get in the um, Discord. There is a link to the Discord in the show notes, isn't there? Oh, probably, yeah. Yeah, and if Most there isn't, the you can message me, message Bug, we will hook you up with a link. Yeah. Um, you can also email us at, uh, you can email me at tnc at jammechanics.com, email Bug at bug at jammechanics.com, email us both at hello at jammechanics.com, or just walk up to us in the street and be like, didn't like that song. Which you will have the chance to do in about a month. We are going to be playing uh let's see a month from now yeah we'll be on tour we're gonna start our tour in washington dc it's not a jam mechanics tour if you're listening to the show but it is a bug hunter and the narcissist cookbook a uh, joint headlining tour we often will play something jam mechanics-y but mostly focused on kind of our our published uh music uh and so we're gonna be in dc we're gonna go up as north as boston and, and minnesota we're gonna go kansas city and dallas and orlando and austin and uh, everywhere in between so if you want to look up dates are gonna be on www.bughunterbug.com Com, and then you can come up to us and tell us how much you liked our our special dark episode of Jam Mechanics. I'm currently in New York. When you listen to this, I am in New York City. I've mm-hmm. got a hotel in Times Square. And par- probably by this point, I'm regretting that decision. You're going to find a rat this time. I believe in I'm you. You're gonna fly in on a rat. What did you say? You're gonna find a rat. Last time you wanted to oh, see a rat, find so a rat. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Exactly. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in. Drop my stuff off. Go straight to the concierge and be like, "How? <laughs> how do I see a rat? Can you get me a rat?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what um, I understand about New York concierges. It's just like you just ask for things. Hopefully, your concierge things. is a cat. Uh, that might help you. <laughs> Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, join, join us again in two weeks for another episode. And also the video for this episode will be dropping in a week's time on YouTube. So make sure you go on to YouTube and follow us on there. Who's it's tells, yours. Is it? Oh, fuck. It's yours. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. It's been a pretty dark episode of Jam Mechanics. Where did the sunshine go? We were two happy boys with two happy toys. Now we are feeling low. It was Grand Commander's fault. (laughs) Brought real shit to the jam. Wait. This melody is something, but I can't put my finger on what. They always told me I was peaking too early. Your lack of buddies is a little concerning. You heard the rumor, 
Cause now I'm hearing confirming I made a friend in my 30s yeah.